Pentecostal Church, may we rise together and give that a big clap of praise and a big shout of praise. May you turn to your neighbor and just tell them how beautiful they look this morning. And yes, Lord, you're so beautiful. And it's your face that we seek this morning. Lord, we're just here to worship you and celebrate you, King of Kings. Lord, we're here to pour our hearts to you, oh God. More than anything, Lord, we desire your presence, Lord. Let's just bless the Lord, church. Let's give him the highest, highest praise of worship this morning. He is God and he is in our place this morning. I just want to say to you this morning, God is here. Let's give him the big clap of praise and a shout of praise. And for you joining us online, welcome. Thank you for being part of what the Lord is doing. And the Lord is right there with you. Enjoy his presence as well. And for you who are here and it's your first time, we just want to extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for choosing Potterswell Church as a place of fellowship. We trust and believe that you will meet the Lord. The Lord will touch you. You will never be the same again. Hallelujah. As we continue with worship this morning, if the Lord gives you a word, I just want to encourage you not to hold back. But please do come share with Paulette, Pastor Kevin, Pastor Kurt, so we all get to hear what the Lord is saying. Because God is always saying something. Just tell your neighbor that the Lord is always saying something. Church, as we continue again with worship, please don't hold back. Take your family and friends. Just use those communion elements. We've got communion stations across the church. Please take your friends, family, break the bread and pray together. Church, the Lord is here. Let's worship the Lord with a quick clap of praise and a shout of praise.
that indeed you are God and you are good. So this morning we take a moment to bow at your throne, Lord, and salute you as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Let's bless the King of Kings, yes. Let's worship the King of Kings who is one that is to come. Sing to you, God. of love oh God thank you for being so merciful to us Lord we indeed gonna worship you father come on saints let us just clap hands to the king of glory he loves us when we lift up our hands to him Lord we love you Lord we worship you king of glory thank you Lord Than the p- 
that is flowing among us. It is your love, Father, that you want us to receive. Father, we lift up our voices in praise of your name this morning. We glorify you for who you are. For you are love, O oh God. And you pour out your love, you pour out yourself for the lives of your people. And we thank you this morning, O oh God, that Lord, you have assembled us here so you can speak to us one by one. I do believe, Lord God Almighty, that you are ministering to us. King of glory, Lord of lords, ancient of days, King of glory, you are the ancient of days. You are high and lifted up. You are glorious in praise. You sit on your throne. Parate kushampana serkelato mikrades telasiliahata parade. I'm calling you to look to me. I'm calling you to have your focus on me. Never on the things that tries to pull you down. I call you to set your affections to the things that are above not on the things that are on earth, for you were born from above. You are my children that I have loved. You are the people that I died for. You are the people that I treasure the most. And this is a season where I want to speak more and release more of myself to you. Can you just lift your eyes? Can you just be attentive and pay your attention to me for the destiny that I have set for you? Thank you.
Heavenly Father, that you are changing situations as we just sit at your feet, oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that wherever you are, God, and you are here in Potter's will right now, Heavenly Father, thank you that we don't remain the same. Thank you that you're taking us deeper into knowing who you are. Thank you, Lord. Church, at this time, as an act of worship, we are to give to the Lord. But before we give to the Lord, may I just invite you, let's just read together First Chronicles 29, verse 11. It says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Let's bow our heads together and pray. Lord, we thank you that what we have is yours. Everything that we have, Lord, is yours. You have given it to us, Lord. Even now, Lord, as we bow to give to you as an act of worship, we acknowledge, Lord, that you have provided. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. As we give it back to you, Lord, we pray that you may be blessed by our offering, by our act of worship through giving to you this morning. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And church, at this time, I invite you as an act of worship to come and give to the Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore. Every heart that is broken Great are you, Lord It's your breath in all us So we pour out our praise We pour out our praise It's your breath Oh 
of Jesus. We open our hearts, Lord, and we just welcome you to reside inside of us, God, in the name of Jesus. At this moment, church, I just feel like the Lord would want us to pray for every parent. It doesn't matter whether there's a single parent or both parents are there, but God would just want us to open our mouth and just bless every parent. Lord, we come before you this morning and we just want to bless every parent, Lord. It doesn't matter whether there's single parents or both parents are there, but we speak your blessing, oh God, and we pray that you may be God and Lord over every household that is in this place this morning. In the name of Jesus Church, let's just bless the Lord. Let's lift our praise to Him. Let's lift our praise to the King of Kings. We praise Him, Jesus. Great are you, God. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Please be seated. Isn't God good? As we gather together today as family, because Father God is our Father. In fact, you're my sister, you're my brother from another mother. Father God formed you. And as a result of that, could I ask you just to turn to your neighbor and say to them, I bless you to thrive in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Helen just had a word she wanted to share, so I want to hand over to her. Thank you. I just, when we were singing that last song, it's your breath in our lungs. So I pour out my praise to you. What hit me was, how often do we take the breath in our lungs for granted? It's only when we're struggling for breath that we even think about how important it is. And that's when we rely on Father God and Holy Spirit and Him to be the breath in our lungs. Let's not do that. <laughs> Let's not take the breath that we have for granted. With every breath, let's praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. He deserves our praise and all the glory to Him. Life is short, eternity is real. People matter most. Father God is here and He's for you, He's with you. Father, I just invite you just to open our eyes to your love, to your presence. Lord, I pray that everyone in this room, every son and daughter, your son, your daughter, that they would be able to experience this morning your presence and your right hand of blessing upon each one. That each one would experience the fullness of joy, your joy, flooding their souls. That today you do special work in each of our hearts to realign and recalibrate us to be anchored to your love. That love you would be our focus and so we welcome you Father in Jesus name Amen just a few announcements on the 6th of February and the 13th of February that's Monday the 6th of February and Monday the 13th of February at 6pm we're going to have a meeting called Hope Carriers we try to encourage family and friends to come together to start discipling one another and so Pastor Bourbon on the 6th of February at 6 o'clock here at the Potter's Wheel will be meeting to show you how to disciple. Please can I ask you to think about joining us, especially those who have got the Foundations book. If you've got the Foundations book and you want to know how to disciple one another, please could you join us on the 6th of February and the 13th of February. Second announcement, FFI is hosting Ancient Paths on the 16th to the 18th of February. If you haven't been on Ancient Pass, can I ask you, can I encourage you to consider going on this? It's a time of inner healing and every single one of us need inner healing. Every one of us, starting with me, even as a pastor, I've had hurts in ministry, in life, in family that God needs to work on. And this is a wonderful place to be positioned for the ministry of the Spirit. Finally, financial freedom course by FFI will be being done here. 
um, with on the 11th, 18th, and the 25th of February. And uh, sorry, Financial Freedom is hosted by Sean, not by FFI, Sean and Odette. And they will be doing a course of how to get out of debt. And I think this applies to all of us. How to get out of debt in a, in a time like we're in right now and walk in the freedom of the Spirit. Can I ask you to welcome up Pastor Joel Martins. Joel and his wife Isabel are here. And uh, as Joel comes up, uh, I met Joel 25 years ago. I went across to Poland to meet Wilkerson to begin Teen Challenge Swaziland because we'd started Challenge Ministry Swaziland. And, and across in Poland, I met Pastor Joel there as he ministered from Teen Challenge Portugal. He was the national director of Teen Challenge in Portugal for 24 years and then stepped into pastoring a, a church in Lisbon, Portugal. And I really felt the Lord say, we need him here for such a time as this to learn how to sow love. And so welcome, Pastor Joel. Can you come through? Lord, I thank you for my brother. I thank you that you have called him as family to this table, the potter's wheel table, that we can sit around the table together and be ministered to through each one of us, that you would allow your bread of life to fill us, to encourage us, and as you anoint him to minister to us, set us free to receive your love, to give your love, and to sow love. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. Well, it's really, it's really a privilege for me, uh, for me and Isabel to be with you. I, I remember when I was here the first time, so the last time, um, 40 years ago, and uh, I still remember the good time that we had together uh, in those in those days. Well, first of all, I need to say that I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know why you are laughing on me, but uh, I'm <laughs> I don't know if that will help. But I'm really nervous, and well, part of the reason is that. For me to share the Word of God, um, is always a challenge. Because I used to think who I am to, who we are to speak in behalf of God. Whom we think that we are. That's why I was sharing with Pastor Kevin uh, the night from Saturday to Sunday was the worst night for me in the week. I know that the grace of God is with me, is with us. I mean, and the favor of God is with me and with us. But I really feel the responsibility after 37 years in ministry, I still feel that. And I'm used to that already. In the beginning, I was struggling. In the beginning, I, I was considering that through the years, those things will become better. <laughs> That's not the case with me. So probably I'm saying that to some of you who you think and still think and a lot of people think that you are not able to share the Word of God in this place from the pulpit to others because you feel uncomfortable and many, I don't know what I'm saying that but 
Sometimes we say about some people they have no that gift. And you know what? That's what I heard through the years. And you know what? I was in agreement with those guys who were saying that because when I looked to myself, I, I was, <laughs> I cannot come into a pulpit and share the word. I, 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 I was too embarrassed in the beginning. You know, I really think that the Lord has his own ways of doing things in a completely different way of the world. And we need to be attentive to that. Sometimes those that we are not able to choose, it's exactly the ones that... You with me? So I'm nervous, but the main reason really today is that English is not my first language. <laughs> I think that you are laughing because you already realize that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to do my best. And you know why I accept the challenge of speaking, even if I'm not really comfortable with English? It's because when I receive invitations, my way of thinking is I'm going to speak to the family. Church is about family. Church is not about receiving high level kind of speakers that speak all over the world. It's about family. It's about sharing the heart. It's about sharing the table. You with me? The theme that Pastor Kevin and the team, the leadership team, invite me to consider with you is sowing love, is about sowing love. You are in the here where you're probably going to hear several, um, several words and several meditations based on sowing love, hope, and faith. But uh, I would like to consider with you this morning more specifically about sowing love. And I, I would like to invite you to open your Bibles in the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 12 and we're going to read from verses 28 through verse 34 it's a very known passage of scripture and probably because we know can I walk here no can, can I okay <laughs> that's part of my exercise as you can see Do you know what is dangerous with passages of Scripture that we really know? Do you know what's really the problem? We are too used to them that we are not open to really hear God's voice. And this is one of those passages, I think. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through verse 34. And it goes like this. I'm sorry, I'm reading from one translation. I don't know if it's yours, but anyway. A doctor of the law, verse 28, Mark 12. A doctor of the law who came near and heard that discussion, seeing that Jesus had answered him, 
well, he asked him this question, which is the most important of all the commandments? I would like to stop here and to consider some thoughts with you just on, on the first verse. What the Bible is saying is a, an expert on the Word of God. And you know what really he is an expert on the Word of God in the days of Jesus? That man can quote the, the, the Torah and the, all, the Old Testament by memory. More than that. Some of them, they could talk regular conversations only using <laughs> codes of the Torah and the whole testament can you imagine because they were con I'm, I'm serious they were considering that if they will dialogue with people just using the words of the Torah and the words of the whole testament that was really a sign that they were holy and speaking in God's behalf. Do you ever heard that? That's culture. That's about the culture of those days. So that's why so many times we don't understand, we don't go deep on the Bible, on on. Because we don't understand the environment, the culture, why things are there, why Jesus was endorsing some issues, and you with me? And if we don't understand the culture and the principles of those days, we, we really don't go deep on the meanings. By other words, what I'm saying is, we just have words and we don't understand the principles. It's the most important thing. The eternal principles. Now, this doctor of the law was, the Gospel of Mark is saying to us, was near Jesus in silence. You see, trying to catch Jesus if he will say something wrong or if he will do something that not pleasing God, you, are you following me? So he was like a spy, <laughs> searching if everything is okay with Jesus. That's what he's doing. And it seems to me that he is following Jesus for days. The multitudes, they were talking about him. He is very known in Israel. <laughs> and the religious, they are very jealous of Jesus because no one is following them and a multitude is following Jesus. So he was near Jesus and he was listening his teachings and he, he came with a question to Jesus that according with his mindset it's a wrong question because he's asking that rabbi Jesus from Nazareth what is the most important listen of all commandments wrong question for the doctor you know why because in all the Torah and all the the books and the Psalms of the whole Testament, there is no more most important element because in, in their mind there is only the, everything is holy. A single letter means you with me. So but my impression is that by listening Jesus he was coming into a conclusion that in the life of Jesus, something is shining like he never saw before. Are you following me? From his acts, from his words, 
from his way of living, caring, loving, receiving the kids. You with me? Something. That's why he is asking Jesus. Oh, Jesus, it seems that for you, there is something very key, the most important issue <coughs> on the commandments. Can you tell me what it what it is? So Jesus is going to answer him. Jesus clarified for him. The most important is this, Jesus said. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. I'm going to stop here too. Listen, the most important commandment, Jesus said, is, listen, O Israel, listen, the Lord your God, because He's the only one whom you need to hear. Do you know what's happening right now with you, with all of you? You are waiting on me to read You know why? Because you are not considering that the first commandment is to hear God. Do you know what you have in your mind? Through the religion, I'm sorry to say that, because of the religion in our midst, we think that the first commandment is to love God. And we are always quoting that. Do you know what you are saying by other words? That loving is a commandment. Do you know what you are saying? That because love is a commandment, you have the capacity on your own to love. But I would like to tell you that no human flesh can really love like love loves. Do you know what's the problem with our culture? Now we go to our culture, okay? We used to say too many times, I was taking breakfast this morning, for example, and I, do you know what we used to say? I love coffee. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't love coffee. You like too much coffee. <laughs> Love is another dimension. By other words, God don't have love. God, the nature of God, is love. It's His foundation. It's, it's His nature. It's His DNA. Everything else come out of that nature of love. Even discipline. Love. Mercy from love. Justice from love. That's our problem. We really think that we can love through our own nation, uh, nature. Let me tell you. One of those days at Christmas time at my table with my family, all my sons and my grandchildren. We are 15 today when we are all together. My oldest son gave us a confession saying that he's struggling more and more to say even to his children that he loves them because he is realizing that he really don't know how to love them. As God. Loves them and loves him. He was crying and saying that. And we were all at the table saying. 
We are too selfish. We have a lot of desires. We have a lot of attractions to so many things that we are not ready like love is ready to give his own life. We are not ready to forgive as love forgives. Sometimes we need years to forgive. Are you with me? Yes. We are too selfish. Our money is our money. What we have is ours. Do you know how love loves? <laughs> what is from God is ours. No matter what we will do, that will never change God loves. The love of God for each one of us and for the world. Are you with me? So, what is the first commandment? Listening. Hear God. Hear God. Because hearing God means knowing God. Really hearing Him. Not just have the words in our mind and coating the words, but really listening, knowing Him. Loving Him is a, is a consequence Loving Him is a consequence of knowing Him. If, if we don't know Him, how can we love Him? And as more as we know Him, our love will grow up. So, Jesus was reminding this doctor of the law of a very known scripture on the whole testament from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 and 5 and and by the way Jesus is quoting that word that that doctor of the law, of the law really was familiar with and I would like for you to open with me in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Jesus is quoting on that specific occasion, that passage of Scripture. And that's how it goes in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Listen, Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4 and 6. This goes like this, listen Israel, the Lord and He alone is our God. Listen Israel, listen the Lord, because He alone is God. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Jesus is quoting that passage of Scripture and reminding him that the first commandment, the first, what God is requiring from us, it's one thing. <laughs> is hearing him come into deep relationship with me. Organize your life in a way that you will have time to hear God. Are you following me? And loving Him is a product of listening, knowing Him. 
And by loving Him, I know that He loves me. And I learn to love me as well, to accept me, and to recognize that even if I'm nothing, I'm loved by Him. And I'm nothing, and I'm open to love those who, like me, are what? Nothing, but loved by God. And now I can love them also, because I'm loved as you are loved. I can forgive you as I have been forgiven. I can give my life to you as he gave his life to me. I can share what I have because he's still sharing provision with me. It's not about human flesh. Do you still believe that loving is a commandment? I mean, a commandment that you can, by your own, <laughs> even your wife, your husband, if God is the center of your life, everyone around you will be loved, even the enemies. You don't going to react to them. We're going to be led by him as we saw with Jesus. Are you following me? That's the God that we worship. Can I, can I say something more? Do you know what is the, the unique characteristic of the people with whom God is dealing with through the Bible. There is one characteristic, really, among the people of God. Do you know what the characteristic is? The ones who are learning to hear Him. That's why God sent the prophets. To what? So that the people will hear, will know God. Do you remember Moses? Moses was inviting all the people of Israel to come on the top of the mountain for what? To hear God's voice. And do you know what the people of Israel said to Moses? No. You go. You will hear God and we will hear, we will hear you, not God. That's why God sent the commandments. Because they don't want to hear from God. Because when we hear from God, we have the strength and the power and the ability to fulfill the commandments naturally. Amen. The most important characteristic on the Bible of those who are following God is those who are learning to hearing Him. Can I ask you something? If you will have the possibility, can, can, let's imagine, let's use our imagination, okay? Some of you, I'm seeing that you are taking notes. Good. You know why? Because by taking notes, it's much, much easier to catch what the Lord is saying. I'm serious. Can I have, can I have your book? Yeah, can I have just for one minute? <laughs> if you will have the chance of being in the presence, really, you, we are in the presence of God. By the way, it's more deep than that. The presence of God is in us. We don't need to call Him to come. We need to pray attention where He lives and say, Lord, arise. Arise in me. I want to hear your voice. 
We need to pay attention to what we sing and what we say because sometimes it seems that in our meetings God is in heaven too far and he needs our worship to come. Do you know where God lives if he lives in you? Do you know where God lives in you? Do you know where you live in the middle of Trinity so that you will have the ability to hear what God want to share with you in all situations of your life? Sometimes we go, you're going to hear in Him through the Word, through the voice of the Holy Spirit as we have already heard. Many times God going to use the body to share. Are you with me? But it's holy the Holy Spirit would testify with us. But now, let's use imagination and we have the opportunity to have an appointment the front of the throne of God. I will give you back that. Don't, don't. <laughs> Can you imagine having an appointment with the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right there at the throne, face by face. And you have the chance of talking by... Are you following me? Using imagination. Well, of course, it's not only who, you who are going to be there talking face by face, with face with God. We have a long line. Do you know, probably you need to wait for your time... Three years, because the line is long. You see? <laughs> On the line, towards the, the throne of God. Can I ask you, what you will be preparing? A long list of things that you would like to ask and to say to God, you know, like these. Where are the cameras? Like these, a long list. A long list, by the way. Because I don't want to lose the, the chance to share everything that I have in mind. And you know, in line, during those three years, oh, one more thing. With whom I need to be married, by the way. You, are you following me? Or, you will take into the presence of God an empty page without anything written. You know, all without no words but room, probably. Well, clean book. Can I ask you, be honest. According with your beliefs, what you will be bringing into the presence of God. Be honest. Come on. We are in family. We don't going to blame you. We are all the same. We have the same flesh. We have the same tendencies, don't we? Do you know what's our problem? We know exactly what we need. We think. But we don't have the power to fulfill everything that we need. Then in the church, somebody told us that he has all the power. And you know what we used to think? Good team. I know exactly what I need. I don't have power. He has the power and I can pray and he will give me. Right? Wrong. <laughs> Do you remember how Jesus teaches us to pray? Your will be done. Do you know what is really praying? It's not just bringing requests to God. It's to hear His requests to us. So probably in the presence of God will be better to bring an empty book. Because we want to write everything that He is speaking to us. You know why? Because... Every time that the Lord is sharing with us what He has in mind for you, through you, 
He will give you the wisdom and all the resources that you need to, fu to fulfill His will. Even if you will die, you will be able to die loving and saying, God, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. I'm not sharing with you philosophy. I'm sharing with you the gospel. Amen. Now, thank you. <laughs> now, when Jesus was going to Deuteronomy chapter 6, do you know that those words, how long? Two minutes, okay. F Fifty minutes, good. Do you know that when Jesus was quoting that passage, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only one that you need to hear. Do you know that specific passage of Scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 6 is known in the Old Testament, in the Torah, as the Shema, say with me, Shema. Shema, Shema prayer. You know, that Shema prayer, that prayer is, is the most important prayer for the Jews in the Old Testament. Moses teaches the people of Israel to pray that prayer in the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, and culturally speaking, the Jews, still today, more the Orthodox, they pray that prayer as the last words when they are dying. Hear, O Israel. The Lord your God is the only God. You must hear Him. And you know the word in Hebrew, in Hebrew, hear, the word in Hebrew that we translate for hear or listen, do you know what the word is? Shema. That's why it's known as the Shema prayer. But now, do you know what means Shema in Hebrew? Is listening... And obey. Do you know that in Hebrew there is no word to obey? Do you know what's the word for, to obey? Shema. And the word to listen, Shema. So Jesus is saying that those who have ears, do you remember those passages of Scripture? Those who have ears to, by other words, Shema. So, it's not just to hear and to know. It's to obey. If we are not obeying, we don't shema. We can quote the scriptures. We can preach. We can say that we are Christians, that we are children of God. But you know what Jesus said? Those who are my children and my disciples are the ones who follow me, are the ones who obey my words. Those who obey my words, Jesus was saying, are the ones that they know me and the Father knows them and called them by the name. It's about obeying. How many of you, you have children in your house? How many times you ask something for the children? Hey, go do this and that, you know. And suddenly you look at them and they are not obeying you and you ask, are you listening? <laughs> Do you know what's the problem? Do you think that they are not listening to you? Do you know why you ask that? Because they are not obeying. So, do you know what is a religious person? He knows everything. But he don't obey. They don't obey. They don't follow. How many of you, you know, for example, I, I, I will not stop. I will not stop. <laughs> do you know, how many of you, you remember 
when Jesus said about prayer, Jesus said, when you are praying, a lot of things to share in that subject, but no time. When you are praying, your Father in heaven, in heaven are what? Come on. Not listen. You go and read, not listen. See. Your Father in heaven, when you are praying, He will see you. It's not, of course, that God hears us. But you know why He's seeing us? Because He want to see us obeying. How many of you, you realize that a lot, a lot of troubles in your life, it's because you have not obeying, not necessarily hearing. Do you know what the people of Eswatini, everyone, is waiting for? The manifestation of the children of God. And who are they? The ones who are listening to the Father and are loving, obeying God. Not choosing any side outside of the side of God. Loving, blessing, speaking the truth. And you with me. Establishing justice. In terms of doing good. To those who are in need. Supporting one another. Taking care of one another. Being an inspiration for Do you know in the Bible how the Father he is known through the Son? And do you know whom you are, who I am? Sons of the living Father. Do you know what that means? The world is also waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God as Jesus did by hearing Him. Do you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I don't say a word, not even an act, if I will not hear from the Father. I'm going to finish with one thought. Can I, Kevin? Say with me, sowing love. How can we sow love? Spending time with God. Hearing God, obeying. It's not coating the Bible. You with me? Can you imagine if in our families, to the kids, we coat the Bible, but we are not obeying? Do you know what the effect that is on the kids? Rebellion. Because they are looking to us, and our words are not related with our actions in obedience. How are we going to sow love? Seeding love. By our actions, words, way of living. The way how we receive in our house, table, in, you know, the way how we share, the way how we forgive, the way how we are ready. To bless if the Lord will tell us, bless that man, bless that family, give away what you have. Are you following me? Are you? Do you remember that parable when Jesus was teaching about some seeds, they fall on hard soil? Do you remember that? Some seeds, they they are thrown on soil with a lot of stones. Some seeds are following in, 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 in the ground with a lot of thorns. But also some seed is following in good ground. Do you know who the seeds are? You and me. 
No, of course, some of you, you are saying, no, it's the word of God. Both of them, because we have the word of God in our lives. We are obeying the word of God. So we became flesh. The, the word of God became flesh also through us. You with me? So the seeds, we are the seeds in the world. And no matter where we are planting our lives, do you know that sometimes even in our family, we, we, we are seeds in tough ground. Sometimes we are seeds in, in, in ground with a lot of stones. You with me? Sometimes we are the seeds of the Heavenly Father in ground with a lot of thorns. But also, we are seed in good soil. And you know what? It's all about good seeds. It's all about being good seed. In the kingdom of God, there is only good seeds. Not m more sheep seeds to put in grounds that are not prepared for the good seed. You know, an agriculture probably will buy two or three different kinds of seeds, for example, of corn, depending on the quality of the ground. Because they used to think, well, I'm going to invest money in good soil. You with me? Good seed, expensive seeds, but that's a good investment. You with me? But to put there, I'm going to buy sheep seeds to put there because that ground don't deserve the good... That's not the economy of the kingdom of God. Only good seeds everywhere. No matter what the ground is. So my prayer, and I know that this, the prayer of God also for me and for all of us, is that the world, his swatini will see the manifestations of the children of God who are willing to hear and to act upon what the Lord is saying even right now to you. God bless you. May we all rise together as we worship.
Father, thank You, thank You, thank You for loving us so much. You gave us Your only begotten Son. That You paid the price with Your Son's body, with Your Son's blood. That we could step into Your presence, the throne of grace, and hear You. As a father, I pray, Lord, that every single one in this room will hear your voice singing over them. We'll see you dancing with joy for them. That they will receive your love and become your bread your love that as they go home to sit at the tables with their family that they will hear your voice as to how to be sacrificial love for their families that they will know how to be loving seed on hard ground and not give up that they will be loving seed in thorny ground and not allow the cares of the world to choke the life out of them. That they will be loving seed in good ground. And that Iswatini would see the manifestation of the sons of God as they take their place to forgive, to bless, to love, to give grace as your son did on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, I pray that we as a family will be able to love like you love. So we invite you into our hearts to take your place in Jesus' name. And if you agree with me, can you say amen? There's a sense in my spirit this morning that those of you who recognize your hearts are hard and you haven't come in to hear God, you recognize you need to hear the Lord. Can I invite you into a special place? We've got a room to my left next to the light where there's a door that will open and a, a family of potters will be standing there to pray with you, to hear God. That you could receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and hear what He has to say, that He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you and He will never give up on you. Even when you give up on yourself, God never gives up on you because He's love. For those of you who are going through a difficult time, I just want to open up the altar right now. If you're struggling with sickness, if you're struggling with hearing God, can I ask you just to come and kneel at the altar? Those who want to step in and receive God and have people pray with them to hear God into the room on my left. But those who want to kneel before God this morning, come to the altar. And because you are seed, you are the housing the Word of God this morning as children of God. Can I ask you to turn to your neighbor and say to them, just turn to your neighbor. You are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor. And can you say to them, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore. May you be filled with love and love like love loves. God bless you.